What's up, B-Squad? It is your boy, JB, and I am here today with a brand new review. This is a new show that we're going to potentially talk about. It is Grown and Gospel. It comes on WeTV on Thursday nights. This is the third episode of Grown and Gospel, so I've missed the first episode and the second episode, but we're jumping in with episode three, and I just want to talk about this show real briefly. So it's not going to be like a lengthy, lengthy review, but before we do get into this, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys aren't subscribed yet, then do me a solid favor and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. You guys know the routine. You can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning your post notifications on, and sharing the video. And with that out of the way, without further ado, let's discuss Grown and Gospel, shall we? So this is Season 1, Episode 3. The episode is titled Marriage Revival. So before I just jump into it, I do want to give my overall thoughts about the show. It's not a bad show, right? It's, it's not a bad show. It's another show that is produced by Carlos King. Um, the first episode, I was not fond of, right? I did not 100% like it, right? Because there's one young lady on this show, and I just feel like everyone is just going along to you know going along like oh it feels like she's an easy target for people to kind of you know beat up on because of you know what she's been through in her life and that's brie so brie is the daughter of fred hammond right honestly out of everybody that's on this show brie is my favorite i like brie i think everybody else is messy as hell elijah's messy Tasha's messy. Um, I will say I do like Nikki. Nikki is the daughter. I believe she's the daughter of Dorinda Clark. I like Nikki. So Nikki and um, Nikki and Bree are the two people that I can say I do like. Tasha, don't see it for her, right? Um, who else? Jay Brooks. I'm still trying to fill Jay Brooks out because. Jay does give a little bit of a messy vibe, right? Just like Elijah. I don't like Elijah because um, I feel like Elijah, for me personally, this is my personal opinion, when it comes down to Elijah, I feel like Elijah, when, you know, now people know when you go into reality TV, it's always good to be a villain, right? Because the villain is either well-received or, or the viewers don't like them. And I feel like that's where Elijah come, came in at, right? He wanted to be either he wanted to be polarizing. He wanted to either be liked or not liked, right? Because if because people who will come in as the villains, typically they are you know trending on social media, right? I'll give you guys a perfect example of villains who trend on social media. At one point, Kenya Moore trended for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Giselle, Robin, Ashley for Potomac, um, Renna for Beverly Hills. I will say on Real Housewives of Dubai, Ayan trends, but she trends because everybody loves her. People love her, right? Um, so Nene Leakes, right? Portia Williams. People who trend because either they're really liked or they're not liked, right? And they're the villains. Kim Zosiak, right? Those are villains. So I feel like that's what Elijah was coming in as, but... The things that he did to Brie, in the, like in the first episode when he put his hands in her hair, I, I, she, he would have, I would have punched him so hard in his face, but Brie didn't, right? Then the second episode, he talked about her party. It's like, dude, shut up. Nobody asked for your opinion. So the episode starts out and we see Brie. So Brie was talking to Jay, right? And she was talking to him about Elijah. So Jay is just telling her that, you know, he's pretty extra, right? I'm like, it's not extra. Like, you can be extra with your friends, but if it's somebody that you don't necessarily know, why are you quote unquote being extra to them? It's just coming off as rude as hell. And I would check his ass. Like, I would read Elijah down if I was Bree, but, you know, Bree seems like a sweet, kind hearted person, and that just doesn't seem like her personality. But Elijah, Mr. Elijah would get it. Miss Elijah Connor would get it each and every time with me, right? Like, I just, ugh, no. So, the next scene is we see Nikki and Tasha, right? So, <laughs> Tasha. The first thing that I want to say about Tasha, number one, 
we got to fix, we got to figure out one of the struggles, right? Either your hair is going to start all the way back here at behind your forehead or your makeup is going to look chalky like you're getting ready to be put in a casket, right? I need one of these, I need one of them to go. Either we got to get rid of the terrible makeup or we got to get rid of this bad hair. One of the two, like, and for y'all to talk so much, for y'all to try to talk about Brie and what she, you know, wears and stuff, y'all ain't no better. Y'all ain't no better, right? So Tasha is getting ready for her husband to come and visit, right? Girl, good luck with that one, especially when, when we saw that husband in that final scene of this episode. Mm. Maybe you should have saved that leg waxing for somebody else because your husband didn't care, right? Maybe you should have got your hoo-ha wax too, right? Because, I mean, you might want to you might want to go get a bullet, a toy, something. Because um, you ain't getting no sex from your husband. Because I noticed what she was talking about. You know, her husband's coming there. Maybe they can be intimate with each other. Good luck, sis. We're going to talk about her husband when we get there. <clears throat> but good luck with that one. Good luck. Good luck. Let's pause here and move forward. Let's talk about Elijah real quick. So Elijah, uh, I don't know if he divvies himself or fa fancies himself as a fashionista or something like that because this hair, and especially the one that you had when you were on that show when you did the Diddy Stare Down, you can't talk about nobody's hairstyles, right? Because yours are questionable at best, right? So he set up this photo shoot for Bree and him and this woman named Gwen, they're talking about Bree's hair, right? I actually like Bree's hair. It's a shortcut. It's blonde. I like Bree's hair. And I kept looking at that woman's wig. I'm like, ma'am, you're the last person to talk about anybody's hair because this wig that you got, it looks stringy and it looks very synthetic. So if I come near you with the blowtorch, I'm pretty sure that that is going to set itself on fire, right? Cause she screams synthetic and then Elijah you with this blonde what's this yeah so Bree showed up down there to where Elijah was right and Elijah I don't know if he again like I said I feel like this is an act I feel like he knew that coming into this show somebody had to be the villain and why not be him right I do believe that he is extra. I do believe that he's over the top. I definitely do believe that. But the thing that blew me was when he was talking to Bree, and he was like, I don't know what really set you out to go from, you know, from one extreme to the next. It was a culmination of things, sir. You were rude to the girl. Like, you're talking about her party. And then you're talking about, well, you know, uh, and she said that's what she could afford, right? That's what she could afford. And then you're still talking about, well, you should have hired, you could have hired somebody if this woman just told you she that she went the party, that's what she could afford, then zip it. Zip it. Shut it. Like, I don't like that. And then, you know, like, you know, you don't understand why she went from one extreme to the next. If you really believe that you hurt this woman, well, he obviously didn't believe he hurt her feelings because he didn't, again, he didn't give a fuck, right? He didn't care. He didn't care. So I was about to say, you know, if you really, if, but he apologized to her, but I don't believe it was as a sincere apology because he doesn't believe, he doesn't understand why she act, reacted the way she acted. The reaction that he, she got, gave him from which he happened, he doesn't understand it. So I don't think that that apology meant a lick of nothing. If you guys watched the episode, please let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. And we're gonna pause here and go ahead and move forward. Next up, we move over to Bree's apartment, right? I think Bree lives in an efficiency apartment. Oh, now I'm not saying it, I'm, this is not me being shade or anything like that, right? Cause I think her apartment is really nice. It's just, wow. I commend people who can do, I, can, I commend people who live in efficiency apartments cause it's just never something that, that I can even do like that just that's that's too claustrophobic for me. like I, I have claustrophobia so living in a space like that I would be I will feel suffocated 
I would really feel suffocated because you have like your living room and your bedroom are the same place. And for her, she works from home and oh God, I couldn't do it. Like even with my last apartment that I had before this one, I had a two bedroom apartment. I had my room, my bedroom, and I had a, a separate bedroom for the, the studio and for me to work. Now I'm back in a one bedroom apartment, but this apartment, you know, I have my living room, which you guys are facing, you guys are facing my kitchen, but my living room is right behind us. And then my bedroom is over here. And even in my bedroom, but you guys see my work computer that I work from in here. But even in my room, I picked this apartment specifically because it has a little space off in my, which I'm gonna show you guys one day my apartment. It's a little space off in my room where if I wanna work from home, I can do that or put the studio in there, which is what's gonna happen. Once I just get everything set up, the studio's gonna go into the bedroom or it might stand here because I'm trying to figure out where I'm gonna put it because I have a lot of space in my living room, even with my couch and I'm about to buy another chair that matches my couch. I'm still gonna have a whole lot of room in this living room. So we might put the studio, like we might put the green screen in here and film from in here. I gotta buy me some bar, I'm getting off track. <laughs> but yeah, um, I just commend people who are able to live in an efficiency apartment. It just would not be me. So Tasha came over to her place and they basically bonded and connected on some, you know, some things that they've done in their past, right? You know, Tasha sang at a strip club Brie was a stripper. Um, they are both. They both were into cosmetology. They both wanted to. They both wanted to sing, right? So they both have also had experiences with other women, and it's fine, right? I know. I don't know. Probably for them and their parents, that's not fine, but it is. So that's really all I got for that scene. Like I said, you guys, this review is not going to be long at all. It's just me just basically talking and trying to hit some points, right? So the next scene we got is this low-budget-ass photo shoot that Elijah set up, right? And I was like, that background, looked like it came from Wish.com. That wig that Brie had on was synthetic as hell. That outfit she had on looked like it came from um, a thrift store. It looked very thrifty. And they were gassing the hell out of Brie. I'm like, girl, please don't let these people gas your head up. This photo shoot is low budget. This wig is look like it's flammable. This outfit, it looked like you're gonna go get on somebody's stripper pole. No shade, but it just looked like you're gonna get on somebody's stripper pole. Again, no shade. So let's pause here and wrap up this episode, you guys. And it's really mostly dealing with Tasha. Um, so Tasha talked to her mama about her, you know, her husband coming there. Can, ah, uh, ah. Uh, she's talking about how she still loved this man, but this man asked her for a divorce. Girl, is it low self-esteem? Because you're asking, mm -mm. if somebody tells me that they want a divorce from me, I'm going to tell them to go, go file the paperwork, right? Like, I mean, no. It just gives low self-esteem, for real, for real, because... I be damn. Like, I be damn. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. And then when he showed up, actually, let's go ahead and get into that, right? <clears throat> let's just hop into that. She did have a brief conversation with Shayna. I don't care about that conversation with Shayna because it literally sounded like it was a conversation of he said, she said, well, he told me this, well, she told me that, well, such and such told me this about that you said this, that you said this. That's all that conversation was, was he said, she said, telephone, phone tag. That's all it was. Y'all are too grown and too old to be dealing with some stu stupid stuff like this. If you two have been friends for years, why don't y'all sit down with each other and have the conversation before now? Like, it just sounded so high school and, re and, and stupid. Like, oh, well, somebody told me that you said that you was, that you was sitting in your car talking about me and da 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 and da 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 I was like, girl, what are we going on and on about? Like, I felt like I lost brain cells. Now, let's get into this conversation with Tom, this Tasha and her husband conversation. First of all, your husband, when he got there, that man seemed completely disinterested in you. I mean, he wasn't even batting an eyelash and you just talking, I mean, you just telling him, talking to him, right? You presented him with a gift. He 
was sitting there like this. I'm like, um, read the room, sis. Read the room. This man don't like you like that, right? So then he presented her with a watch. I was like, okay, that's nice. But I was like, I still don't see anything with this man that says that he is remotely interested in you. So then she went and put on some, I guess you call that lingerie. It was interesting looking. I, I mean, I'll be honest, I, I, it, it wouldn't do nothing for me, but I mean, she was trying to get him enticed to have sex with her. Good luck with that one. <laughs> Good luck with that one. Because when she came out there with them, her legs out, her titties, you know, out, he was just sitting there looking like, okay. I'm like, ma'am, you don't, you don't see that this man is not interested in you? Like, you're embarrassing yourself. You're embarrassing yourself. Then you wanted to have, you know, tell him to, you know, have sex with you and you put your hand out. He didn't even want to grab your hand. I was like, lady, please stop. Cut these cameras. It's it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing as shit, right? So then, you know, she said that, you know, you keep my secrets, I keep your secrets. I was like, scratch the, you know, you know how you put the needle on the um on the, on the record player. You say what now? Take that to, to say what now? R -r Run that back. You keep his secrets. Um, what secret is that? Is this man gay? Are you his beard? Is that what it is? Because I was like, girl, huh? Then she said she cheated on him because, you know, he wasn't having sex with her. Now, that ain't a reason to cheat. That is not a reason to cheat on anybody, right? That is no reason to cheat. But I was like, um, ma'am, I just don't think he likes you like that. Like this man, when you came out there, if a man finds you sexy or attractive, he can be like, damn, babe, you look good. Again, like I said, it just it just like a it just looked like a nightgown that she had on. It just looked like a, a a nightgown that was high up, you know, past her knees and had a little cleavage out. It just looked like a nightgown. So it didn't look like like sexy lingerie. It didn't, you know, she didn't have, you know, like I think of, when I think of sexy lingerie, I'm sorry, but I think of like lace and stuff. It doesn't have to be thongs. It doesn't, you know, but something that shows off your assets, right? Your ass, your titties, your legs. That, I mean, I guess that was a church woman lingerie. I don't know. I don't know, but I mean, I know. I know bro man went interested and bro man at one point said, let's cut the cameras. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Let, if you guys watch this show, let me know down in the comments what you guys think of this show. Like I said, it's not a bad show. It's just, for me, it does remind me of why I don't go to church, right? Because I think that people in the church are very, very judgmental. And the things that they judge other people for are some of the same things that they do behind closed doors, right? You can You can preach the word of God all day, every day, but... God is not a judgmental person. We're no, Again, no sin is greater than the other. So I think that's where my disconnect comes in with this show. But overall, it's okay. It's not a bad, bad show. It's just, I just see some hypocrisy when it comes to this show. But that's it. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments below, and we'll discuss it there. And I will see you guys in the next one. So stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys in the next one.